May 5th, 1994. This afternoon, the House of Representatives rose to the occasion and stood up for the national interest. The president and those working to ban assault weapons can claim a major victory in Congress. 216 members stood up for our police, our children, and for safety on our streets. It was a blow for the NRA, which just two and a half years ago stopped a similar initiative in a landslide. What it says is that the NRA can be beaten. Tonight, has the NRA really lost its clout in Congress? This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. Ecstatic, says White House Press Secretary Dede Myers. A stunning victory for the president, says the Associated Press. And then a little further down in the same AP story, a crushing defeat for the National Rifle Association. What are we talking about here? We are talking about a House vote late this afternoon to ban 19 different types of assault-style weapons. Weapons like the Uzi and the AK-47. But a crushing defeat? Actually, the measure passed by just two votes, 216 to 214. In spite of the fact that opinion polls show the public supporting stronger control of assault weapons by a massive margin of four to one. In spite of the fact that a conservative NRA stalwart like Henry Hyde of Illinois supported the bill in committee. In spite of the fact that the President of the United States threw the full weight of his office behind the measure. The miracle, one might almost say, is that the vote was that close. Except that we are talking about the NRA, which only two and a half years ago was able to defeat a similar measure by 70 votes. Here's Nightline correspondent Dave Marish. There they stood, scores of Congress people, mouths agape, eyes riveted to the tote board high above the speaker's podium. All their vote estimates obsolete, only the final tally changing moment by moment before their eyes worth counting. Then minutes after the time clock showed zero, 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 a ripple of applause and the official announcement. Reported vote, the A's are 216. The nays are 214, and the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to the is laid upon the table. The numbers, close as they were, couldn't disclose the human drama behind several last-second votes. Koki Roberts watched from the House gallery. This was one of those rare, really exciting afternoons in the House of Representatives. When this vote began, nobody knew how it was going to turn out. And then after the clock had run out, the votes are still coming in slowly. They tied at one point. Then the no votes are up by one. And you had this phalanx of supporters of the ban march across the, the chamber to two Democrats who were sitting on the Republican side. And they just stood around the Democrats saying, please, please, we need your vote. Do it for the children. And none of this, of course, visible, but we could see it from the gallery. And, uh, and then one of those Democrats voted no. The supporters of the ban leaned really heavily on the other one. He got up and cast the last vote for the assault ban. If it sounds like the normal rules of party discipline went haywire today, they did. Listen to Republican Christopher Shays. And I'd like to thank my leadership for allowing each member on the Republican side of the aisle to come to his or or her own conclusion. Shays was one of 38 Republicans to vote for the ban, while 77 Democrats deserted the president's position. All this after a muscular, sometimes angry four-hour debate. So take your pick, members of Congress. Protect the political lives of gun lobbyists or the lives of policemen across America. This is hypocritical, this is window dressing, and it should be defeated. As the debate rolled on, one clear fault line ran through it. Representatives of urban districts tending to vote for the ban. They have names like Striker 12 and Street Sweeper. I can assure my colleagues that these military-style weapons are not being used to sweep the streets of New York City of deer. Those from rural areas against it. If we thought for a minute that banning some arms was going to keep people who wanted to commit crimes with weapons from doing it, Everyone would be for that. We know that's not the case. Meanwhile, off the floor, arm twisting was the order of the day. 
At the White House, the president started the morning with a conquest. North Carolina Democrat Stephen Neal, a no vote, turned to a yes. After the vote, Mr. Clinton admitted he'd been working the phones night and day. I made dozens of phone calls. I finished uh, my phone calls last night at midnight, and I started again this morning. And I continued uh, up to the very end. While the president worked the phones, Brooklyn Congressman Charles Schumer, the floor leader for this bill, worked the halls of Congress. Here's the real man. Hi, Jim. Greeting gun control advocate James Brady, launching congressional allies like Nita Lowy and Nancy Pelosi. But still, just hours before the vote, Schumer confessed. My mood is tense. That's what I would say my mood is. I was upbeat yesterday. It's too close to be upbeat. When a police officer is shot to death, it is 18 times more likely an assault weapon was used. Through most of the afternoon, the battle of words roared on. Liberals like Louise Slaughter of Rochester, New York, arguing for the ban. Conservatives like Cliff Stearns of Ocala, Florida, arguing against it. People have a much greater chance of being killed by a knife, fist, club, than by any kind of rifle, including an assault rifle. In their post-mortems, the representatives seemed as far apart as in their presentations. She says the ban passed because members decided that the 580,000 people who sent them down here are more important to them than the NRA. While he says today's was a triumph of disinformation. Well, I think a lot of people keep hearing the term street sweeper, dream machine. So that argument, that emotional side of the argument, carried the day in this case, and perhaps not the facts. At the White House, a triumph was a triumph was a triumph. And say some aides, a prelude to more triumphs for Bill Clinton in the future. White House correspondent, Britt Hume. This vote will give the president some political momentum going into the votes to come on the larger crime bill. And it will also provide the White House a much needed morale boost at a time when all it's been hearing about are allegations about the president's personal peccadilloes and also at a time when it just got another sweeping subpoena in the Whitewater investigation. But the long-term consequences of this vote, if any, are much less clear. While on Capitol Hill, the future for the assault weapons ban and the crime bill in general seems, says ABC's John Cochran, pretty upbeat. The understanding all along has been that if the House did vote for the ban on assault weapons, then it would be added to the crime bill that both the House and Senate must work out in conference committee. What could go wrong? Well, for one thing, even though the Senate has already voted for the ban on assault weapons, conservative Republicans in the Senate could filibuster. Will they filibuster? Democrats don't think so. Not with public sentiment running against these weapons. For some in Congress, today's vote posed a choice beyond politics. Georgia Representative Sanford Bishop had been leaning against the bill, and so were his constituents. But Bishop called time out before casting his vote he and his staff prayed together, after which, on whose counsel he does not say, Representative Bishop switched his vote to back the president and the assault weapons ban. I'm Dave Marish for Nightline in Washington. When we come back, we'll be joined by a member of Congress who voted for today's gun ban, despite the fact that he is a member of the NRA, by a former member of Congress turned lobbyist, and by political commentator E.J. Dionne. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by AT&T. That other long-distance company says they have proof they'll save your business big money over AT&T on international calls. But cut through their proof and you may not be so positive. You see, they're not comparing similar calling plans. And they give you an extra discount on only two numbers, while AT&T gives you an extra discount on a whole country. So next time they show you proof of big savings, Remember, there are holes in their argument. For the whole story, call us. Let AT&T work for you. To build a Mercedes-Benz that's technologically innovative, safe, roomy, with exceptional handling is to be expected. But to do it for under $30,000... Now that's a feat of engineering. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. This will pump you up. 
prisoners building huge muscles in jailhouse gyms. They're getting bigger and stronger, and you're footing the bill. 2020, Friday. We're just for feet, the world's largest athletic shoe store. This week, it's trade-in days. Trade in any pair of athletic shoes and receive $5, $10, or even $15 off your new shoe purchase. A $5 trade on a $25 shoe value, $10 on a $50 shoe value, and $15 on a $75 or more shoe value during trade-in days. This week at Just for Feet, where your 13th pair is free. Now, you might think that a grocery store is an unusual place to talk about Bell Ford. But Bell Ford thinks that shopping for a car or truck should be as easy as shopping for vegetables. Here you can see the price before you buy it. Same's true at Bell Ford. They put the price of every vehicle right on the windshield, so there's no haggling. Why don't other car dealers have one price buying? Guess they don't think you've got a head on your shoulders. Bell Ford. One low price, no high pressure. Joining us from our Washington bureau, Tom Downey was a member of Congress for nine terms. He now heads a Washington lobbying firm. E.J. Dion covers politics for the Washington Post and is the author of the book, Why Americans Hate Politics. One of the things that keeps many members of Congress from voting against the NRA is the fear that the organization will mount an expensive opposition campaign. That is exactly what they threatened Representative Matthew Martinez with. He is a Democrat from California. He joins us now from Capitol Hill. How and why did you engage their wrath, Congressman Martinez? Um, well, I guess because I am an NRA member, and in the past I've supported uh, their position. You know, but their position gets to be more militant all the time. Uh, there's nothing about this gun bill that really affects the average hunter. None of the guns that I own to hunt will be affected by this gun ban. Uh, further, their tactics, their high-handed tactics are uh, part of politics of the past, and they've been losing because people are beginning to resent that high-handed tactic. Well, actually, it's, it's those tactics, if, if, if you don't mind, that I'd like you to focus on for a moment, because in the past, uh, to be perfectly honest about it, I think people have been afraid to describe them, at least people who are still in Congress. What happened? When the uh, subject matter is so obviously wrong uh, uh, with them, uh, the subject matter that they're in the way they're phrasing it, uh, the general public is going to have a greater voice, and that's what happens here. No, but I mean, what happened with you? Uh, what, 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 what happened? Uh, I understand you got a phone call from a couple of uh, what NRA officials. Uh, right, uh, a gentleman called identifying himself as a member of the NRA board, and before even talking to me about my position on the bill, he started right away with his threats. And now that's the worst thing you do to me is threaten me. Uh, you put me in a in a very awkward position because if I were to succumb, were to, succumb to those threats I wouldn't be a, a, a good representative. Uh, you cannot allow people to threaten you into a position. Uh, if they would uh, uh, lighten up on the, uh, their tactics I think they would have done better. Can you tell me what the nature of the threats were? Oh, Exactly what you mentioned earlier that uh, they would mount a campaign against me and I would pay dearly for voting against them. The first words out of the individual's mouth were uh, you better not uh, vote uh, um, uh, for the ban. If you did, uh, we're going to spend all kinds of money and get you defeated. Uh, uh, he said he and his family uh, who live in my district, uh, or he said he would re-register to at his family's home in my district, and he and his friends would spend uh, every cent they had uh, to see me defeated. Are you, are you made, at, I mean, you can't help but be a little bit nervous. This is not just some kook calling you up. This is someone who actually represents a rather significant organization. Well, when you look at the numbers of constituents in the poll you mentioned in the district, I think that uh, it's going to be very rough for them to do it. The first threat was that they would do to me what they did to David Roberti. Well, I really had to laugh at that because they, uh, David Roberti beat them back. Uh, David Roberti beat their recall, and in fact, it benefited him because where he was behind in the poll for the uh, statewide race that he's in, uh, he comes out ahead of the, in the poll now because of all the publicity they gave him. Congressman Downey, uh, can we actually say that times have changed? I think you can, uh, Ted. There's no question that the 80% of the American people that were for the ban weighed heavily on those members who were on the margins 
they have to be worried about the 20 percent who they know in their congressional districts will actually show up on election day and remember and vote against them. Counterbalance to that is now the very vocal and strong support for the ban by the police organizations and most importantly by the President of the United States who made it possible. E.J., uh, analyze for me, if you will, how and why it is. I mean, I'm still a little bit startled, not by the fact that the NRA was beaten on this, not by the fact that this ban actually won, but that it only won by a couple of votes when you have four to one public support, the president throwing his weight behind it, the Senate has already passed a similar measure. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed that they're still able to, to, to mount the kind of campaign that they mount. Well, I think what you've had on the gun issue for a long time until very recently is that the only people who made an issue of guns were the people who were against gun control. And that politicians who were for gun control were afraid to engage that 80% of the electorate. They just wanted the issue to go away. And I think what you've seen in recent elections is politicians who favor gun control trying to make it an issue going after the NRA, and they've begun to shift the balance. But I think an awful lot of Congress people in their heads have this vision of the NRA of old, which I think doesn't exist anymore uh, in the same kind of power, but they still have that vision in their head and they're scared. In the 88 campaign, if you went around the country, most of the bumper stickers you saw for George Bush weren't put out by the Republican Party, they were put out by the pro-gun groups. People well, I, still remember that. Actually, one of the interesting things, Congressman Downey, is that the, the Republican Party uh, actually permitted some of its more prominent members uh, who are known as conservatives to go right ahead and, and vote with the president on this one. Well, that's right. I mean, you cited before, Ted, the uh, example of Henry Hyde. I think a number of Republican members, uh, a significant number, recognize that this is not a winning issue for them either, that they want to have some balance on the crime issue for themselves, or they'll allow the president uh, to steal this issue away from them, and they're nervous about that. All right, uh, we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, I'd, I'd like the three of you to give me your analysis of where this is going to head in the future. We'll be back in just a moment. so many people still enjoying the service and convenience of their local true value, another use may have to be found for those humongous hardware warehouses. Get a quart of Ortho Weed Be Gone Weed Killer for $6.44 and a bag of Green Thumb Lawn Food for $4.99 at true value. Quantities are limited. Tower, I uh, think I once bought a lawnmower here. Introducing the Chrysler LHS Lease. It gives you traction control and cruise control. It gives you dual airbags and anti-lock brakes for added safety control. And now for only $329 a month, it gives you more financial control. But see your dealer. This is a limited offer, and that's simply beyond our control. Chrysler LHS. An eloquent expression of form following function. At your Chrysler Plymouth dealers for only $329 a month. Next time, our return to the Grand Old Opry in Nashville. With country stars Vince Gill, Alabama, and Patty Loveless. On Good Morning America, here on ABC. If you're dragging yourself home at the end of the day, you need a beauty rest. A beauty rest by Simmons recharges your body like no other mattress can. With independent pocketed coils, every one pre-compressed, energized to firmly support every inch of your body. So you wake up feeling like a new person. Nothing energizes your day like a beauty rest night. Phil, boy, do you need a beauty rest. Now you can get 50% off all frames at Lens Crafters. 50% off every frame we carry. Other places run discount offers, but the selection is limited or there's some kind of catch. At Lens Crafters, it's a real half price sale. No strings attached. 50% off every single frame we carry, and we'll still make your glasses in about an hour. This is a great deal. People should not miss this. Lenscrafters offer ends Monday, May 9th. We help people find the right doctor, match up their insurance with them, assess their symptoms, uh, and help them to get to a, a physician as fast as possible, depending on their condition. And it does give them a lot of confidence 
in knowing that we are registered nurses, that they are talking with someone who has a little knowledge um, about medicine. It is a free service that we provide, that St. Thomas provides to the community. If you have a health question or need a physician, call and just ask St. Thomas. And we're back with former Congressman Tom Downey, newspaper man E.J. Dion, and Congressman Matthew Martinez. Congressman Martinez, uh, you're an NRA member. Would you vote differently if the anti-gun lobby were to come along now and say, okay, that's two nice steps, the Brady Bill and now the, the assault weapon bill. Uh, now we've got a new one we want you to vote on. Are you prepared to take this another step? No, what I'm going to demand of the NRA is that they become reasonable. You know, they should have been out in front of this bill... Uh, championing the fact that you want to keep the guns out of the hands of uh, criminals and uh, teenage gang members who drive in the streets and shoot up the neighborhoods. Uh, I think they should start being responsible about the gun ownership and that they should uh, take the lead like they did in hunter safety and they should start uh, uh, trying to appeal to members uh, on a uh, common sense basis that uh, we need to work out the flaws in this bill. There are flaws in this bill and uh, I uh, certainly would be willing to work on those flaws in the bill as we move forward with this thing. Uh, and they should join on to working out the flaws and not demanding, demanding all or nothing. Because that demanding all or nothing and threatening members of Congress uh, is what put them behind the eight ball in the first place. I know of two votes that they lost simply because of their high-handed tactics. My own and that of one other member of Congress who confided in me that the reason he did was because of the threatening attitude. Congressman Downey, it's, it's kind of interesting because it's no longer quite as easy to, to judge right. how people are going to vote based simply upon liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican. There's an interesting mix on both sides of this bill. That's right, and uh, Congressman Schumer, the author of the bill in the House, wanted to make this fight a very public fight so that it couldn't be a battle waged behind closed doors with threats and intimidation. So that if you're a Republican member from a district where there has been a great deal of gun violence or a very active police organization, you have to balance that with the fact that the NRA may still be very powerful. But if you're interested in re-election, you don't want to offend police officers or the families of victims of crime. One of the things we, we haven't mentioned yet, E.J., is that I believe the number was 70 Democrats who actually came down on the other side of the issue, voted against the ban. Well, I think there have always been a lot of Democrats, especially from the South and especially from rural areas, who still have reason to fear this issue. But I think that what's, what's more important, I think Congressman Downey hit it on the head when he talked about the police. I think that a few years ago, when you looked at gun issues, it was liberal gun controllers against gun owners. And that wasn't a good equation for people who want a gun control. When it became the police against the NRA, it was a wholly different issue. So I don't think it's surprising you had those 70 Democrats. There have been many more on that side before. I think what's more significant are the Republicans who came over. And President Reagan was doing some lobbying. Former President Reagan was doing some lobbying for this bill. It shows how much the mood has changed on this. To a certain extent, what the NIRA has been predicting all these years is already beginning to happen, and it's going to happen even more. And that is, uh, gun control people are saying, well, the Brady Bill was nice, but it really doesn't do much against crime. And the, and the assault rifle ban is good, but it's not going to do all that much uh, against crime in the streets. And indeed, they are going to try and take that next step. What's going to happen then, E.J.? I think it's going to be, when you have a two-vote margin on this, you're, you're bound to say the next step is going to be really hard. But that's what they said when, when the Brady Bill did not pass by a landslide. I think that you've got a certain momentum on the anti-gun side right now. And some of the measures they want to take sound very reasonable to people. Stricter regulation, for example, of the way guns are sold and of the people who sell them. The other step that's going to be the hardest step is going to be some kind of gun registration done probably through the states. But the argument that you ought to treat a gun as at least as dangerous as a car, I think has a certain resonance with people. Uh, but I think they they are going to have a tougher time getting those things. But I think that's where it's going. Sad uh, go ahead, please, Tony. Sadly, I don't think that the NRA is going to listen to Congressman Martinez's wise counsel. I think they'll probably use this defeat to gin up their direct mail campaign and frighten their members even more and become even harder lined. And if they do that, then they are more likely to suffer defeat in the future. Well, I was going to say, that's what they have always done in the past, but they've also, I mean, they've also showed themselves to be a very, very savvy lobbying organization. And ironically, I mean, 20 years ago, 
you would not have expected to see a Democratic president aligning himself with the police forces around the country uh, and running the kind of campaign that uh, the President Clinton ran successfully this time around. Well, I, th I think one of the things that President Clinton did that was so important is he went out of his way all year long to say, I'm not anti-hunter. He even went out uh, with a congressman. He went shooting and made sure he got himself... Uh, had his picture taken hunting and I think it's very important that he and the people on the, on the pro-gun control side said we're not waging war on sportsmen on hunters uh, and I think that people had not prepared the ground like that before. What about universal registration uh, Congressman Downey? You think it's possible? Oh I do and uh, it should be the next step for the members of Congress and, and the Senate. The question is whether or not they want to do it very close to a tough vote like this. I don't know that they want to expend that sort of political capital. Clearly the groundwork needs to be laid, but uh, with the president out there pushing and promising change, anything is possible. Well, but if, if they don't do it soon, they're not going to do it right before a mid-year election, are they? Or a mid-term well, election? Not, not likely, only because uh, a lot of uh, chits were used up uh, to get this vote passed, and uh, Clearly, Mr. Schumer and uh, Senator Feinstein, who was the champion in the Senate, want to prepare their colleagues for the next step, and that'll take a little time. Congressman Downey, E.J. Dionne, thank you very much indeed. Congressman Martinez had to leave for a vote. We thank him also. I'll be back in a moment.